You're not a 10. All right. I'm not saying that to be mean, but you're not a 10. Okay. A man's right to confer judgment on any woman's beauty while remaining himself unjudged is beyond scrutiny because it is thought of as God-given. That right has become so urgently important for male culture to exercise because it is the last unexamined right remaining intact from the old list of masculine privilege. Those that it was universally believed that God or nature or another absolute authority bestowed upon all men to exert over all women. As such, it is daily exercised more harshly in compensation for other rights over women and the other ways to control them now lost forever. We learn to be pretty, catering to the beauty myth, but in a capitalistic, catering only to men with resources type of way. That's why we all try to avoid being broke man bait. That's why we are obsessed with old money aesthetics, with being classy, being elegant. We are turning the beauty myth around to benefit ourselves instead of being a slave to it. Hey bestie, welcome to the Spoiled Girly Support Group Podcast, where we talk about how to get that bag while also securing your own bag. I'm your host Elle, and let's get into it. On today's episode, we are talking about men's obsession with calling women ugly and the sinister truth behind this phenomenon. Now, you will want to be mad when you're watching this video, but bestie, what do we say? Don't get mad, get paid. With that being said, let's get into it. Let me play you a clip that started this whole video for me. I'm gonna be honest with you, you're not a 10. All right. Mm. I'm not saying that to be mean, but you're not a 10. It's only fair, right? You you rated me. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna rate you, but uh, I'll just say that you're not a ten. Okay. That doesn't hurt me. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to hurt you. Are you down to revise your answer? If we got makeup remover. No, my makeup's expensive. Why would I want to take it off? Uh, no. Is there a difference? <laughs> expensive. I'm not taking it off, Brian. <laughs> is there a difference in no. your rating? <laughs> with makeup without makeup no i told you brian it's all about confidence so i came across this video on tiktok and at first it was like oh okay you know it's just like something that guys do a lot like they always tell women that you're ugly you're not a 10 you're mid says the three all these ways to put women down and it's almost always based on appearance and i'm like why why is it and okay it is true though that women also like to go after men for being baroque so i totally get that and uh, why that dynamic is because in the dating marketplace women are more heavily judged on their appearance and men are more heavily judged on their money but that's not really the topic we're talking about today the topic we're talking about is how in online discourse especially even if you're not a content creator you're just a consumer of content you go on women's accounts and even if the people who are not content creators they're the ones making these videos or posting pictures of them feeling themselves you always get men in the comments who just say all these negative things. And I'm like, why? And this phenomenon is so prevalent that there's even a trend on TikTok now about men's comments versus women's comments, where women's comments tend to be very encouraging and praising the content creator or just like being very uplifting and having that like supportive vibe in the comments. And then men go in the comments just to be negative. Back to that video that I just showed you, there's this really troubling trend of relatively attractive young women going on these podcasts and almost always their chosen profession is that within the s work realm a lot of them are of girlies okay and we've already done an episode on of girlies so check that out if you're curious when i first saw these girlies on these male podcasts getting humiliated i'm like why like why would you go on these podcasts to be humiliated until i found out that a lot of them are OF girlies and they use the podcasts as marketing. They're getting their bag. So I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So if you ever wondered why these women would go on these podcasts just to be humiliated, it's marketing, okay? They are getting their bag. Like they are using men's misogyny to stuff their pockets. And I love that for them. I mean, we're going to get to a point where a lot of us women as a collective will turn on S work as a whole, but we're not there yet we're not at that stage of awakening yet so whatever stage we're in we're gonna work with it baby steps i guess anyway back to the topic so if you ever wondered why these women would go on these podcasts to humiliate themselves that's why it's marketing and apparently women humiliating themselves is good marketing yeah that says a lot about our current culture actually current male culture it brings me back to when margot robbie was this mentally unstable but very good looking and sexualized character but the moment she plays barbie she's mid 
Why would she even play Barbie? She's mid. The moment she actually speaks to the girlies and dresses for the female gaze, all of a sudden, she's mid. Very curious, okay? So, you know what? We don't give the OF girlies enough credit for that. So, I don't think that these OF girlies on male podcasts, like, they're dumb because they're not dumb, okay? Anyway, however you feel about the OF girlies and the OF, the OF profession as a whole, we're not really here to pass judgment, but that's why. That's why they go on these podcast episodes is because it's marketing. Back to the topic, between the podcast clip and the men's comments versus women's comments trend on TikTok, men just love telling women that they are ugly, especially online. It reminds me of all the times that I have been on the receiving end of these physical appearance attacks. Like, why are men so obsessed with calling women ugly? Especially women whose opinions they disagree with. Especially women who cater to the female gaze instead of the male gaze. They really perceive women ignoring the male gaze as an attack on themselves, on their manliness, on their manhood. And I think it's because when you grow up as a man and you're conditioned to believe that all media is catered for you, all media is built off of the male gaze, having media that does not cater to the male gaze is boring or maybe even threatening. And that's really why I think a lot of the men on Twitter especially turned on Margot because she stopped catering to the male gaze in her role as Barbie. As Barbie, she was catering to the female gaze and in a sense, ignoring the male gaze is very threatening to men. Anyway, as someone who has a lot of opinions that a lot of men disagree with, especially a lot of men online, because the men in my real life, the men that I interact with on a very frequent basis, like the men in my life, whatever i say is basic i have been asked why i even make this type of content because like doesn't everybody already know that but apparently people don't already know what i know okay so i'm growing the bubble that i live in so that a lot of us girlies can live in a very similar bubble where men are good men are not misogynistic and men actually want what's good for you because they want to create good partnerships with you they want to create a community like i don't know it, it's so bizarre how very basic standards such as wanting to be taken on a proper date wanting a man to open the door wanting a man to just be a good partner period is so threatening like it really baffles me but apparently my bubble is not very common i'm gonna be a little self-aware here you know what's really sad is when what i think is just basic and normal is such an outlier that i can build an online community around it because it is so rare because it is such an outlier the goal is for my reality and my vision to be the reality and vision for a lot of women especially the reality part because it's just sad back to the topic let me give you a few examples of men being npcs online just commenting the same things over and over again says the three mid coffee emoji wait till you hit the wall enjoy your cats and your dogs you're gonna die alone and they always say this especially to women whose opinions they disagree with and they can't just say i disagree with you you're wrong they always have to attack your appearance because apparently you need to be beautiful to have a valid opinion and tied to that is this idea that you have to be beautiful to be valid period if you are to be perceived by men anyway i love reading books as free therapy and i highly recommend doing it because arming yourself with knowledge is the absolute best way to get rid of the bs that people are trying to project on you remember that people who hate themselves project their hate for themselves onto others so if they call you ugly it's because they feel like they are ugly and they need you to be ugly so they don't feel too bad about themselves anyway i share a lot of the stuff that i read on my weekly newsletter so if you want to get in on that go to manifestl.substack.com and put in your email so you can get my weekly newsletters like i share the weekly tea on there okay it's called the weekly manifest tea so you can get a weekly digest of what i'm reading and raving about with that being said I love reading as free therapy. So here's something that made me feel a lot better about my experiences as a woman being on the receiving end of physical attacks from men and seeing other women be attacked by men based on their looks. You know what? It's never a good feeling. Even though you know you're pretty, even though you know you're good looking, even though you know you're not ugly, it's still not a good feeling hearing that from other people. So 
Let me read this to you. A man's right to confer judgment on any woman's beauty while remaining himself unjudged is beyond scrutiny because it is thought of as God-given. That right has become so urgently important for male culture to exercise because it is the last unexamined right remaining intact from the old list of masculine privilege. Those that it was universally believed that God or nature or another absolute authority bestowed upon all men to exert over all women. As such, it is daily exercised more harshly in compensation for other rights over women and the other ways to control them now lost forever this quote is from the beauty myth by naomi wolf and i highly recommend this book it saddened me a lot but it also woke me up at the same time and here's my beef like with a lot of feminist writing and all that stuff first of all i used to be a hater i really was so being an academic in the hard sciences in the physical sciences i used to look down on the soft sciences you know the women's studies i was a hater I will admit it, but now that I'm grown and gained perspective, I think it's underrated. But my one criticism, or just comment, I mean, I really, really appreciate the book, is what now? Okay, like what now? So this passage just explains that men being mean to women online, like first of all, this book was released like a long time ago. Like when was this? Okay, I'll put the year here, but I know it's like from a while ago. And it still rings true to this day, like who could have predicted that even on new social media platforms such as TikTok, women would be experiencing the same physical appearance attacks that this book describes. Okay, who would have thunk? It's almost as if it's been happening for the longest time. Like I said, I love using reading as free therapy and this quote just explains so much why men are so obsessed with putting women down online. Or should I say putting women in their place, which is under men's thumb forever seeking male validation. Men's mean comments to women, especially about our appearance and fear-mongering about our supposed loneliness. You're gonna die old and alone with your cats and your dogs. Is yet another control tactic to exert their dominance. As if they hold authority to dictate what is beautiful. Because they actually do in a patriarchal society. And men's mean comments online reflect that because the online world reflects the real world. And here's the thing, like we already know that these things are happening and this is why things are happening, but what now? And that's like my beef with a lot of whatever I'm reading. That's my beef is what now? Like, okay, we're awake, what now? What happens when you being awake to the ways in which you are disadvantaged in the world does not erase you're being disadvantaged in the world, what now? And that's why the cornerstone of this support group is don't get mad, get paid. Because the more you wake up to these things, the more you wanna get mad. And that getting mad period process, it keeps you from getting paid. In this example, we are aware of the beauty myth. And what even is the beauty myth, okay? The beauty myth is an obsession with physical perfection that traps the modern woman in an endless spiral of hope, self-consciousness, and self-hatred as she tries to fulfill society's impossible definition definition of the flawless beauty. So now that we know what the beauty myth is and we have validated it against our own experiences, what now? Being awake to the beauty myth doesn't remove the real benefits that women get when we cater to the beauty myth or the avoidance of penalization by catering to the beauty myth. We know it is a myth forced onto us to become our reality. We are awake to how we are being manipulated, but what does being awake to the manipulation do when this being awake, this awakening, doesn't stop the manipulation. And I think this is what's happening now and a lot of the girlies who have sort of had this feeling this whole time, instead of getting mad about the beauty myth and how pervasive it is in our culture and how catering to it gives us tangible benefits, we learn to be pretty catering to the beauty myth, but in a capitalistic, catering only to men with resources type of way. That's why we all try to avoid being broke man bait. That's why we are obsessed with old money aesthetic. That's why we're obsessed with being classy, being elegant. We are turning the beauty myth around to benefit ourselves instead of being a slave to it. And a lot of people will say that, well, isn't catering to whatever systems already exist just perpetuate how much they have harmed us, this and that? 
we've tried everything okay we did we did the body positivity movement we did the HAES we did like all these things F your beauty standards we already tried that way how come we're not trying the other way okay and honestly I don't know I don't know the solution okay I just know what worked for me when you are awake and making your movements rooted in reality and being market driven you just do better for yourself the less time we spend being miserable and being angry and the more time we get paid and profiting from whatever systems we live in if a lot of women individually win wouldn't that be a win for womanhood period i don't know there's something to think about a lot of the women who already have existing capital and status you can afford to not cater to the beauty myth it's so true and i love that for them but for women who do not have existing capital and status we don't get the privilege of not catering to the beauty myth and that's just the reality because to be perceived as not beautiful is the same as not to be perceived at all and i think that's sad but anyway how did we get here that got a little too deep anyway lots of thoughts from that one video of a man putting a woman down or should i say putting her in her place which is under his thumb and forever seeking his validation good for her for not caving in and uh, you know what the internet never ceases to amaze me long story short whenever you see men being mean to women online especially about the woman's physical appearance just know that this is nothing new and it is yet another power move on these men's parts to control women don't give in to it and the best thing we can do is get paid instead of getting mad and cater only to the systems that benefit us in ways that benefit us okay and uh, for a lot of women it is catering to the beauty myth in a capitalistic catering to only men with resources type of way that's all i have for you today i just wanted to let you know that you have so much inherent worth and value in a world that is hell-bent on devaluing you now get that bag bestie <laughs>